and the seal. He crossed his arms across his chest. He reared back and he said, Ha! I've won. Well, God, what now? I've won. What a fool. You've sent your own, your own son like a lamb to the slaughter. Ha! You think this loving, kind individual could beat me? I've won. I always knew I'd won anyway. This is going to stomp my head? <laughs> He's dead. He's beaten. He's in a hole in the ground. Nobody could get him out of there. <laughs> I've won. Finally, after all these years, all the way since Genesis 3.15, I've been fighting this fight, and I finally won. <laughs> <sighs> Gia, all I'm good at is fighting God. I, I don't really know what to do with myself now that I got the Messiah taken care of. I, hmm, I guess I have time off. What should I do with time off? I've never had time off before. I know. I saw some people do this once and it really looked good and I think maybe now I've got some time off, I'll do it. I think I'll have a picnic. Sounds good, I'll have a picnic. So the devil went down to hell and he got his big picnic basket, see? And he got all this stuff in it that devils like, you know? Deviled eggs, and deviled ham, and a big jar of jalapeno peppers, the hottest ones you can get. You know? Stuck them right in the old basket and he started to walk out of hell and he remembered. He says, hey, man, I got a big corporation here. I can't just walk out and leave it unattended. So he got on his intercom, you know, and he got hold of his secretary. Her name's Demona. He said, hey, Demona. He says, I want you to call up my two lieutenants, uh, Death and Corruption. You know, Corruption, his other name is Grave. And I want you to send him over, to send him over here to me because I want to leave him in charge while I go on my, my holiday here. So old Demona got hold of him, and they came up to the office and reported, you know. And uh, the devil said, Death. He said, I got a special job for you. He says, I want you to take over hell while I'm gone on my picnic. He says, but the special job I got is, he says, I got that uh, Jew up there, Jesus, and he's in this hole in the ground, and like he is really dead, man, and I want you to make sure he stays that way. I mean, I want you to wrap yourself around him, and I want you to hold on to him like you never held on to anybody before. And Death said, well, man, who have I ever let go? He says, I know I missed Enoch, but I turned my head and he was gone. What could I do? And he said, and I tried to catch that Elijah cat, and I burned the sleeves right off my best robe. Because them fiery chariots are a bummer, you know. <laughs> but the thing about it is, anybody I've ever got my old bony fingers on, I've still got. And then the devil turned around to corruption. And he says, okay. He says, now Death's going to hold him. Now corruption, he says, what I want you to do. He says, I want you to just like dissolve him to dirt. Just, you know, dissolve him to ashes and just blow him away because I don't want to even have any traces of Jesus left when I get back. And, and old corruption said, well, man, anybody he can hold, I can rot, you know. And so the devil left and he, he went and he had a great picnic and it lasted for three days. And then he came back to hell. He was all happy because he won, you know, and he came in whistling, you know. You know, that's just a song I made up. Don't anybody think it's rock and roll? Uh, I, know, uh, I know everybody thinks that the rock and roll is of the devil. Anyway, he was whistling and everything like that. And uh, he came up and he unlocked the big old gates of hell and he pushed them open and he, he locked them back up. You know, he shut them. And he locked them up, you know, and he walked off down the uh, corridor there and uh, he got down by his office, you know. And he walked around the corner by his office and there was his two lieutenants, old death and corruption. They were standing there going... Nice uh, trip. <laughs> and the devil said, Don't tell me something went wrong. And Death said, Well, he said, uh, Sorry, boss. I mean, I really tried to hold Jesus, but uh, there was something about him. I, I couldn't hold him. Corruption said, Yeah. He says, That was weird. I couldn't even touch him. Not only could I not put corruption on him, I couldn't even touch him. And while these three old uglies were sitting there talking, the devil looked down one of them long, dark corridors in hell, the longest, ugliest, blackest pit in hell. 
where there had been suffering from the beginning of time. He looked way down at the bottom of that pit and for the very first time ever, a little light came on. And that light shone out bright way down there in the pit. And it started coming toward the old devil and old death and corruption. And as it came forward, it got bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter and bigger and bigger. And the really weird thing was that every time one of these beams of light would hit one of the cell doors, you know, where the, where the spirits of the people were kept, well, a cell door would just pop open. And those people would come out and they'd be praising God and they would be singing Hosanna and they'd be singing Hallelujah and they'd be glorifying the name of the Lord and everything was just in chaos and people were running free and hell was all lit up and the devil was shaking all over and he looked way down in the deep part of that light to see where it was coming from and guess who it was that was coming striding through the, through the corridors of hell. Well, it was Jesus. That was who. It wasn't the beaten, crucified the Jew of the cross, but it was the risen, glorified Lord of glory, the one that's called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And man, he came striding through the old, old corridors of hell, man, and all the people were with him, and they were all shouting hallelujah and praise God, and old Jesus walked right up to the old corruption, and he grabbed him in his hand, and he threw him that way, and he grabbed old death around the neck and threw him that way, and he reached out and grabbed the old devil by the front of his shirt, shook him three times real good and hard, and said, hand over them keys to Turkey, you know, and I tell you, man, and so the old devil went down and got the keys to death, hell, and the grave out, you know, this big old key ring he had, he went through the A's and the B's and the C's and the D's, and he got down to the J's, you know, and he got off the one that said, Jesus and Nazareth on it, and Jesus took it, and he looked at it, and he said, well, that's pretty good. He says, but uh, see, I can see into the future, which is something you can't do, devil, because if you could have seen in the future, you'd never had me crucified because that's what we had in mind the whole time. <laughs> and um, if you could see in the future, you could see way down here, way down August 22nd, 1966, in a mop closet at Navy boot camp, there's a fellow by the name of Mike Warnke. And he's going to need his key. And so while I'm here, old devil, why don't you just give me Mike Warnke's key too? As a matter of fact, as I see into the future, I see there are a lot of Mike Warnke's. A lot of people who are going to need their keys. So while I'm here, I'll just take them all. And he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan. He shoved Satan aside. He went up and put his hand in the middle of the gates of hell and pushed him over. Boom! And he walked out. And he led all of those people that had been captive free. And he went up to heaven. And right on the corner of Faith Avenue and Hallelujah Boulevard, he opened this key shop. <laughs> and it's been doing a jam-up business for 2,000 years, man. Just jam up. the message the message we have for you is not how to be religious not how to be holier than thou not how to be better than the next guy or not how to be uh, so heavenly conscious you're not earthly good the message we have to you is there is a key shop and your job as long as you live is to take the key that you've got the one that not only fit your chains, but it fit your ignition too. Because if you work it just right, when you get set free, you get turned on at the same time. You know what I mean? And keep chugging for the Lord. When you see a person that's just like you, go up and say, hey man, see this key? I know where you can get one that'll fit what you need too. That's our job as Christians. And that's what you're looking for. Those of you that are out there and if you're really searching and looking for the answer, the key is what you need. We're not preaching church. We're not preaching religion. We're preaching giving Jesus a chance to fit a key to your lock.
and set you free thank you